Okay, next comment moving on. Raul uh, commented on the texture optimization video that I did a while ago. So, want to know what should be the size of the build app to be able in 20 megabytes limit of Apple. Uh, I think if you're talking about the, uh, the, the ability for a player to download the game using a 3G network and not Wi-Fi. I believe that's been increased to 50 megabytes, if I'm not mistaken. I'd, I'd read that a while ago. So I think uh, don't worry about the 20 megabyte limit anymore. I think it's 50 megabytes for, for users who want to download the game over a 3G network. Uh, but if I remember correctly, roughly, if you do want to get it within that 20 megabyte limit, I think the final uh, IPA the size of the IPA file is roughly uh, 13 megabytes or something like this. I, I, it's been a long time since I actually did that, but it, it, it's, um, it needs to be within that 13 megabytes so that when it goes onto iTunes, it increases or it unpacks or something like this. Or the zip file has to be 13 megabytes, the one that you send to the iPhone app store for approval. And then once they unzip it, it's going to get larger, of course. And then, so that zip file needs to be 13 megabytes or something like this. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, Raul, it's okay because it's now 50 megabytes uh, a limit. But please, please double check that with with the forums or with the Apple documentation. Um, but once your game's available, definitely drop a comment or send us a message or a video response, and then we can see it and then we can spread it around for you as well. Uh, so I hope it goes well. So Zion Villa, uh, 5.55 tap on the jump bar. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'd read that one already. That's from my other comment. Uh, smashed games. I'll buy a MacBook this summer, and it looks like you have the 13-inch MacBook Pro non-Retina. I'm currently using the the fat HP ProBook 14, uh, 14 inch, 2.5. I'm going to use it for school things. Unity 3D Photoshop, my etc. Do you think it's? Do you think it can do a good job? You should make a video talking about Macs. Uh, so smashed gamers. Yeah, I, I use. You're correct. I do use the Mac 13-inch MacBook Pro, which is a non-Retina. And I got this one around two years ago. So far, it's worked great. Really, really good for building Unity games, for doing Photoshop. Uh, I do pretty much everything on my Mac. I chat or surf, watch movies, and so on. Uh, so definitely recommend it. I don't know what the price is, obviously, over in, say, North America, if that's where you're based. Uh, but I don't think there's any major, major positives in getting a ret retina, other than that it looks really, really good. So I checked the prices in China if, around a week ago and the non-retina one was a lot cheaper. But definitely it's a great system and it's better to have a Mac as well if you're planning to build for any iPhone or iPad uh, platforms because then you're allowed to install the Xcode development uh, IDE which you need to build for Mac uh, for iOS, iOS uh, platforms. So but yeah, totally recommend, definitely get a Mac uh, unless you're just focusing on say Android. So, uh, blah, 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 no, um, you do great videos, uh, sorry, let me, get, okay, you're doing a great video, anyway, my name is Oscar Sweden, I'm making, uh, now it's got a uh, game, real life competition with your friends, so I'm not a friend now, uh, so I think I'll, I'll follow up with this one, uh, separately, sorry, Oscar, if it's, uh, how much money do you earn from each click, sorry, let me browse this, uh, my apologies, let me just quickly pause the video, I'm going to read this, because it's a large one, and I'll come back. Okay, so I just did a quick read because this is a larger, a larger uh, message. So, Oscar, thank you so much for thank you so much for getting in touch, and I'm really glad you liked the videos. It's awesome. Um, so, you're doing an app now, and you're asking about which uh, ad networks we use, or can I give some advice on that? At the moment, we use AdMob.com, and I think you'd mentioned it there. And we've also just started using ChartBoost.com as well. Definitely recommend ChartBoost because it's the I can't remember the exact amounts that you make but it's definitely better than AdMob at the moment. The click-through rate percentage that we get varies widely uh, but it's on average it's roughly around the uh, 2 to 3 percent maybe 3 to 4 percent click-through rate across all of the games on Android and iPhone. We find a higher click-through rate on iPhone than we do on Android and I'm not 100% sure why. I have some guesses but it generally performs better on iPhone. Chartboost.com the revenue for an iPhone click as well, uh, if a user taps on it or if a user downloads the game through a chart boost ad, is also higher than it is on Android at the moment as well. The other ones that I do use are tapjoy.com. 
which you can have incentivized and non-incentivized ads. Incentivized are where you say, hey, the, the offer wall appears, the Tapjoy page, and it says, hey, download this game and you'll get 100 coins in your the game that you're playing now. They also do the ones where it's non-incentivized, where it just says, hey, check out this game. So we also use that one as well. Um, in terms of the, the place to place, the country to country, definitely we found in North America that the, uh, the click-through rate is higher and also the payment is higher for an individual click. The amount of money we actually make for, say, an individual click, again, varies. But on average, say, an iPhone, I think it's roughly, you might sort of find clicks from three to five cents per, per click. Uh, I think AdMob recently started to do cost per impression as well. So that means that even if the user doesn't doesn't uh, tap on the ads, you can still make money just because the impression appeared. I think that's a new thing that AdMob has done recently. But in terms of the number of uh, the amount of money that you get per individual click, it varies wide, uh, widely. The I've seen one click cost two dollars fifty one time, and I don't know if that was a bug or something like that. But literally, just one click was like two dollars fifty, which was amazing. I hope it. I wish it was like that all the time. So um, I hope that gives you a little bit more information. Um, I've seen other people getting nice CPA for the first few months. Um, information and video. Yeah, I think um, what I'll have to do is a separate video on this one, Oscar, to 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 give you a little bit more uh, in depth information and share a little bit more, or say, an individual game of ours on AdMob or ChartBoost. Definitely, please drop me a comment in one of the videos, or please send me a message if I don't do that. If I don't do this video in the next couple of weeks, because that video shouldn't take me a lot, shouldn't take me too long to do, because it doesn't require me to set up any tutorial code. Uh, generally, the tutorial code, the tutorial videos take a lot longer to do. Uh, that's why I've not been able to do them. But more of the informational ones or the developer diary videos I can do. So definitely drop me a comment or an email if I've not responded to that, and I'll try to do one for you. But awesome, thank you for the message and I'm glad you like the videos. So, Zupal, hey, great tutorial so far, but I'm having a problem with this one. Getting a compiler area, main game does not denote a valid type. Any hints where I could have gone wrong? Uh, the main game and the Pong game video. So, possibly, hmm, why would the main game not be a valid type? Check that the name is correct. Make sure that uh, the, the actual name of the script is a capital M and a capital G. It could be a small M and a small G. Um, the other reason is, I'm wondering if you've got files in different locations. Make sure that you, each of your scripts, if you're, if you're writing in JavaScript, keep those in the same scripts folder. Don't put one in, say, the plugins folder and then one in the, in the scripts folder because they they might not res recognize each other's file types in that case. Uh, make sure you're also building with JavaScript and not C Sharp uh, for, for the sake of the tutorial because uh, those those are different, slightly different languages inside of Unity. Um, aside from that, I'm not as sure, but please let me know if you managed to fix that one and drop a comment if you do. Uh, if it doesn't work, then please check out uh, uh, Unity 3D forums. They're really, really good and, and do a, and do a search for uh, does not denote a valid type. You'll probably find a lot of clues as to why that doesn't work. So sorry I can't help you out more with that because you really need to sort of look at the code. Uh, I would need to look at your code myself and then try to figure it out. Uh, but you know you can post the code as well. Maybe I can I can reply that way. So, but let me know if it gets fixed anyway. So, um, using the Havoc Renderware. Uh, okay, let me just pause this for one second. It's another long uh, long question. Just a second. Okay, so I just did a I started a quick read. So JT, thank you for the thank you for the question. I hope I hope you see this video. Um, so you mentioned that you're you're building another game. Thank you for considering me to be part of the team. Uh, at the moment, really, I'm I'm so busy and I wouldn't be able to join any team at the moment anyway. Uh, you know, uh, I think a cool place to take a look if you are looking for talent for Unity 3D games is go to the Unity forums, uh, Unity3D.com, and then go to I think it's support and then community or something like this. But there's a section in the Unity forums that's called collaboration. And there's a bunch of people in there who are always looking to like join teams or looking for other talent. Uh, check that out. You should be able to find some really cool people in there who are a lot better at coding than I am. So 
But if you do a game or if you do launch some kind of beta or video, please let me know. Please drop a comment or, or a video response. It'll be awesome to see. So either way, but keep in touch. Keep watching the videos and, and I hope it goes well. So, um, all right. So Franco, my name is Franco from Argentina. First of all, I have to say your videos are a huge inspiration for me. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you so much, man. That's awesome. Uh, and second, I have a doubt. I would like to know how to put the in-app purchase system in my game. The things that I've uh, the things that I finished my 2D game, doing it was easy, but I don't know nothing about monetize my game. Do you understand me? Can you give me some advice? I want to put my game in Amazon Store, Google Play, and Apple Store. Yeah, that's a good idea. Those three stores are the biggest. Can I do that in the three stores at the same time and with the same in-app purchase system? So, uh, Franco, you you need to do you need separate plugins for each store. So you need one plugin for iOS, one plugin for Google Play, and one plugin for Amazon. And the way that I get those three is I use Prime 31 plugins. And that if you go to prime31.com, you can get each of those plugins. And they are paid plugins, but they've saved me a huge amount of time. My advice is for what you said is, yeah, get the game onto the three stores. Those are the three biggest mobile app stores at the moment. So definitely do that. The other thing is, depending on your game type, have your purchases as a currency so like coins or gold or gems or something like this and it gives you a lot of flexibility so that if you have somebody you want to sell like a weapon or a shield or some item in the game you can you can very flexibly say hey okay this costs 50 coins this one costs 100 coins and then when the player purchases those coins say like a player plays one dollar for 100 coins two dollars for 300 coins it gives you a lot of flexibility because if you just have, say, this item costs $1, this costs $1, then you have to make those items worth $1, if you know what I mean. They have to be, they have to feel like that value. But if you have the currency you, and the player buys 100 coins for $1, let's say, then this can be like, oh, this is 10 coins. So they only spend 10 coins out of the 100 coins they've just purchased. So this item is only 10 cents. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility there. So I'd say make it a currency. The other piece of advice is have a lot of in-app purchases. So have many. And this goes to everybody out there. Like I've, what we found is games that have a lot of in-app purchases make a lot more money than just one. So if you make a game and it has one in-app purchase for $1, it's very hard for that game to make a lot of money, in my opinion. If Depending on the quality of the game, of course. If the quality is very high, then it then it will do well. But if the quality is medium, then you need to have more in-app purchases. So, for example, in a casino game, you want to have a, a purchase which is one dollar, three dollar, five dollar, ten, all the way up to sixty. And we've done that with our Pop the Fruit game on the Amazon App Store. So, so check out the game, and you'll see what I, what we've done is some gold for one dollar, three dollar, five dollar, and sometimes the player will purchase five dollar, ten dollar. And just the other day, we two people had bought uh, coins for $50 and two purchases. So it made $100 in just two purchases. So that's really good. So definitely have a broad range of, uh, of in-app purchases as well. And that's my advice because it's it will you'll find people who really do love your game, who are, who are very happy with it, are, are willing to pay good money for it because they're enjoying the experience. So... Uh, I hope it goes well. Franco, if you do the game, publish it, uh, drop a link or a video in the comments. I'm definitely interested in seeing that and, and seeing what's going on. So, But thanks for the comment. Jake Nurse, how are you doing, man? So just got a review done of your app AMX and can't wait to do one of your newest app. I've seen the vids of you working on. Come check it out. Uh, yeah, Jake Nurse, thank you so much for the AMX video review. I've seen it just, the, I think, yesterday or the day before, and I'm going to share that around really soon. Uh, Jake Ness is awesome, everybody. He's done uh, some reviews of of, uh, of our other Cobble Play games on the iPhone App Store. Definitely check out his channel, Jake Ness One Two One. I always share his videos, and he's he's done some really cool videos. I, I really enjoy watching the the I think it was the Modern Combat Four ones, uh, and also does a bunch of Minecraft videos as well. So check it out. Thanks again, Jake Ness. If you do any other videos, please let me know. I'm going to share those on Facebook and also put them in the game description as well. If anybody out there does a review video of any of my other games or any of the Panda Tap games, let me know and I'll share those around as well and give you a shout out. So good to hear from you, man. I hope you're having a good week. Antonio, uh, the link is wrong. Could you fix it? Uh, how to add a Unity Facebook? Uh, I'll have to check this one out, Antonio. Thanks for letting me know. 
Um, I'm not sure which one it is, but I will take a look and I will figure it out. I'm just going to open this in a separate tab so I can see it later. But thanks for letting me know. Sumya, uh, sorry if I've said that, pronounced that wrong. Uh, how you've experienced the letters Cassid is the, the, the Google commits against it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's some kind of advertising. Anyway, I'll move on. Uh, Yenebra one again. So Martin, can you please record a setup tutorial of this beautiful plugin in Android version? I believe there are many people who would appreciate your efforts so much. We cannot find a thoughtful tutorial at all. Uh, so this is the Facebook for Unity. Oh yeah, so uh, basically, yeah, I'd done a video a while back, which is how to add a Facebook um, uh, login and Facebook post functionality to an and a Unity Android Unity iPhone game. And I've also done this on Android. And what I will do, Yenebra, is as I, um, as I do this new developer diary series on the 2D platformer game, I'll also be including Facebook in it at some point. And that's where I can include a video of that as well. So sorry I can't do a devoted one right now, but definitely keep track of this uh, the 2D platformer game because that game's going to be on Android first before iPhone. And I do plan to get Facebook in there as soon as possible. So um, I think I've done a video of it at some point as well, an Android one maybe. If I didn't though, please let me know and please keep commenting because I will, I will do that as I go along. Uh, very, very useful to have Facebook in games of course and I'll try to do a clear one on, on that. Uh, it's a little bit complicated but um, I'll hopefully be able to just repeat what I've done on previous games and then apply it to this new game. So uh, definitely drop me a comment if I've not done it in a couple of weeks and, and I'll try to get it to you as soon as possible. All right, Bruce187, uh, thank you for uploading these tutorials. Why does the paddle not stop at the wall but instead go off the screen? Is there any way you can stop this from happening? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think because at the moment the paddle if in, in the early tutorial, I think if you're, part, if you're on part 4A right now, I think if you look in the later videos uh, in the series, I actually uh, describe how to stop the paddle from going off the screen. If I didn't, the basically the way to do it is to clamp it and what you can do is you can say, um, for example, you can say uh, just roughly is paddle dot position dot x equals math f dot clamp open parentheses paddle dot position dot x comma and then set the minimum value, which is the the left side of the of the wall, the position of the left wall, which is like minus three or something like this and then comma, and then um, the maximum position x, which is the right-hand wall, which is 3, plus 3, or whatever it may be. Close the parentheses and then use a, a what's it called? A, I forgot what it's called, the dot and then the comma underneath. I can't remember what that's called, it's just not coming to me. Uh, sorry, if that's not clear, then please, please drop me another comment and let me know if that was clear or not, and I'll quickly write it down for you. But it's very easy to clamp the position of the paddle, so... But anyway, thank you for the comment, Bruce. Uh, Pierre, great tutorials. One question though, for some reason the ball turned black and doesn't want to revert back to white. I've tried everything as far as I know, reapplied the texture, changed its color to white, restarted my entire computer for good measure. Nothing works. Any ideas how, how this can be solved? It, it could be a lighting problem in your, in your scene, uh, Pierre. I think one quick way to do it, if I remember correctly, let me just go to project settings. Um, ooh, which one is it now? Physics quality. Um, I'm trying to remember which one it is. Or if it's player, it's not that. There is something in the settings which allows you to, to define uh, our render settings. I think that's it. And if you change this color here, this fog color, I think if you change that to white, then if you've got any kind of lighting in the scene that will be affected by the fog color. It's not changing anything here because none of these objects are responding to uh, lights in the, in the world, in the game world. But give that a try and let me know if it, if it works or not. If not, my opinion is just make a new, a new material by just going up to your materials section here, right click, create material, and then just start a new one for fresh and then drag that material onto the, onto the ball. Uh, let me know if that works or not. If it doesn't, then maybe I can give you some other clues in, in a comment. So either way, but thanks for the comment, Pierre. Good, good, to, good to hear from you and everybody else as well. So I'm going to stop that video there. I hope this was useful. I hope you like me doing comments in this way. Um, 
please subscribe please like the videos as always uh, I'll also uh, if you feel like donating then I've also added a donate button as well to, to these videos uh, in the description of course you don't have to do that it's just great if you comment and subscribe and maybe download the, download one of the games and give a rating that's awesome support thank you so much uh, for now everybody I'm going to do some more on the new 2D platformer game so stay tuned I'm going to be bringing out more videos soon Everybody, happy developing and have a great week, okay? Bye-bye.